South Park is a show that has never been afraid of saying what they want to say. They've done it all, from creating a three-part arcing storyline centered around the boys playing superheroes and accidentally summoning the Dark Lord Cthulhu, to creating an extensive meta-commentary subplot devoted to PC culture and how it affects the show itself. South Park has stayed successful for as long as it has because of its unwillingness to change in a climate that is increasingly pressuring it to. Matt Stone and Trey Parker have stated in interviews that there is not a line that they wouldn't cross, and so far in the show's 23 seasons, they've crossed just about every line possible. Are there lines that you won't cross? No. no. I don't, yeah, we haven't found one yet. In this video, I'm going to give you my argument as to why South Park is the greatest comedy ever created, and hopefully by the end you'll agree with me. So let's get into it. Why South Park is the greatest comedy ever created. When you think of shows known for their satire, many shows come to mind. The Office, The Simpsons, The Daily Show, and so on. I'm here to argue that no show has ever done satire better than South Park. There are several reasons for this, but I'll begin with timing. For those that don't know, every South Park episode is finished in its entirety in only six days, meaning all the writing, animating, voice acting, it's all done in those six days. Because of this, South Park is always on top of current events, often days after they occur. For example, when Barack Obama was elected president in 2008, South Park released their episode about the election the very next day, including actual quotes from the president in his speech. This ability to tackle the most current of events is essential to South Park's successful satire, since the events they're making fun of are still fresh on the mind of the general public. This gives them a major leg up over other cartoons like The Simpsons or Family Guy, with some sources stating that episodes of Family Guy can take up to a year to produce, while The Simpsons can come in at around six months. These shows, which often tackle similar subjects to that of South Park, are oftentimes just too far behind for their satire to be near as effective as South Park's. This short time frame is also essential to the creative process of the writers. By allowing themselves so little time to produce an episode, it doesn't allow for the opportunity to second guess things. It creates an environment that allows for the unfiltered mind of the writers to be expressed in the show. This is the best case scenario in a show like South Park that survives off of offensive and unfiltered content. Anyone who has ever had to do a project for school knows that a relatively short time constraint creates an atmosphere of pressure. A healthy dose of pressure is important when it comes to creating something, since it helps force the creative mind to operate efficiently. As is the case with most people, it would appear the creators of South Park work best with some pressure. However, the effectiveness of the show's satire also comes down to how it's executed. South Park's execution of satire is second to none. They almost always hit the mark with pinpoint accuracy, and while their effectiveness often comes down to the fantastic writing, arguably the most essential parts of their satire are the literary devices that they use. If you're a fan of South Park, you've likely picked up that they have several different formulas they choose from when satirizing a topic. South Park has a few specialties when it comes to these formulas, most often using hyperbole. Every episode has hyperbole to at least some degree, but I'm referring to the episodes where exaggeration is their main tool. The writers are masters at taking a point and pushing it to its absolute extreme just to hammer it home to the viewer. This is seen in the season 19 episode, You're Not Yelping, in which Cartman becomes a Yelp reviewer in an effort to get free food and better service since he holds the leverage of a bad review over the owners. Others in the town begin to realize that they can do the same thing and soon enough almost every person in town is a Yelp reviewer. Of course, when Cartman sees this, he gets upset and decides to call all the Yelp reviewers together and form a sort of Yelp team, all while saying that there needs to be one distinct leader and implying that that leader should be him. It's great that you all want to be critics, but we all know who the real food analyst of the town is. That's right! Because of the self-absorbed nature of the Yelp reviewers, every single person there interprets his speech to be about them and that he's calling them to be the leader. Every person here thinks this is about them. The fact that the writers made every single person there believe Cartman was talking about them does a great job to illustrate the point that they're trying to make, that Yelp reviewers think they're more important than they actually are. Obviously, the writers aren't actually trying to say that every Yelp reviewer is this way, they just use hyperbole to poke fun at the ones that are. This idea of depicting groups as extreme hyperboles of themselves is essential to the South Park formula. Depicting groups as extremists is one of the most effective ways for the writers to make fun of a group. 
By overemphasizing their negative traits, they bring to light these traits in a way that is tongue-in-cheek, but at the same time an actual criticism of the group or person. This method makes it much easier for South Park to get away with satirizing things that many people see as taboo or offensive. A perfect example of this is in the character Lou Kim, the owner of CityWalk. They intentionally made Lou Kim to be the most stereotypical Chinese man possible, complete with extremely squinty eyes, horrible broken English, and a Chinese restaurant. Hello, CityWalk, take order, please. <laughs> Hello, is this CityWalk? Yes, this is CityWalk. The reason they are able to get away with what many would consider a racist depiction is because they made him so stereotypical. If he just had a couple of stereotypical traits, I believe it would actually be more offensive. This is because by giving him all the ridiculous traits, it creates a degree of separation from reality. This separation from reality is what is key in satirizing successfully. Since the character is so absurd, it becomes clear he isn't there to make fun of Asians through stereotypes. Rather, he is poking fun at the absurdity that is the stereotypes themselves. Another example would be Season 6's Red Hot Catholic Love, in which they parodied the Catholic priest molestation scandal. The local priest, Father Maxi, visits the Vatican to try to help solve the issue of young boys being molested by Catholic priests, only to discover every single other Catholic priest in the world is molesting children, and their concern is not trying to stop it, but rather trying to stop people finding out about it. All over his country, there are reports of children being molested by men of the church. If things continue this way, we'll never be able to have sex with young boys again. He also discovers the Catholic Church is actually controlled by a giant sentient queen spider, which is the highest power in the church. The absurdity of this episode is what truly makes it great satire. Once again, the writers use absurdity as a tool to remove the idea a degree from reality, making it easy to laugh at while still keeping it realistic enough to get their point across. This is the concept that great satire is built on. The Vatican rules cannot be changed, so saith the spider. Go on, Priest Maxi. See if you can convince her. South Park's other main form of parody also has elements of hyperbole. However, it is a bit more complex than just that. I'm not entirely sure if this concept has an actual name, so go ahead and let me know in the comments if it does, but I like to call it flipping the script. This writing technique is definitely my personal favorite, since every time they do it, it's an instant classic and it always produces endless laughs. They've done it many times, but the episodes I believe to have done it best are Season 11's With Apologies to Jesse Jackson and Season 7's Red Man's Greed. The basic idea behind flipping the script is to take a story everyone knows, most often with two conflicting sides, and put each side into the opposition's position. In With Apologies to Jesse Jackson, this comes after Randy says the N-word on national television. Randy is then ridiculed and tormented by people calling him N-word guy over and over again. He expresses in a spoken word club that being called that name makes him feel less human, that people refuse to recognize him as an actual person, and instead he's just a name. He later talks about how hard it is to constantly be reminded of something lame that happened in your past, and that every time he's called that, the person calling him that is bringing up a painful chapter of his history and all the negativity that came with it. Eventually, he's even chased by a group of gun-wielding rednecks who can't stand intolerant people like Randy. How Randy feels and is treated after he acquires this nickname pretty clearly parallels the experiences of the black population in the United States, who still feel the effects of racism and inequality in this country simply due to a label placed on them. Flipping the script is also seen in Red Man's Greed, when South Park is going to be destroyed so that the nearby Native American tribe can build a superhighway from Denver straight to their casino. The only motive of the Native Americans is money since the superhighway will bring much more business. After the South Park citizens refuse to leave, the natives give them blankets that they intentionally infected with the SARS virus in an attempt to kill them off. Once again, they don't make it very subtle that this is mirroring the experiences faced by the native people of America at the hands of white settlers throughout history, having the land they own taken from them and being genocided by diseases brought by the settlers. Just because you have a piece of paper saying you own it doesn't make it yours. We grew up here. Our parents grew up here. We shop at that Walmart and eat at that Chili's. We take fish from the streams and bread them and freeze them to make fish sticks. Not only are both of these episodes extremely well written and hilarious, but the points being made are also some of the most effectively presented in the show. 
And with apologies to Jesse Jackson, the message that the writers are trying to articulate is that the N-word is charged with history and bad intentions and is representative of the Black's experience in America. So being called that word is something a non-Black person will never understand. The message behind Red Man's Greed is the past and continued treatment of Native Americans is a truly despicable act that was perpetrated solely on the basis of greed and the idea of manifest destiny. Flipping the script allows the viewer to look at an issue from the perspective of the opposition. And while it is often a bit absurd in the show, the general ideas behind the issue are presented in a way likely never thought about by the viewer. It's an extremely effective way to get your point across in satire, since it puts the oppressor in the shoes of the oppressed while making both sides laugh in the process. You really, you really don't know how hard it is to be constantly reminded of something lame that happened in your past. If you asked people to describe South Park in one word, I'd be willing to bet that one word would come up more often than any other. Offensive. Over the years, South Park has garnered a reputation for being a show that is outrageously offensive on a regular basis, and this is for good reason. The amount of major controversies the show has been involved in is mind-boggling, no doubt causing more controversy than any show to ever air on television, as well as causing arguably the biggest controversy in television history with episodes 200 and 201. Hey guys, check it out! Tom Cruise is a fudge packer! What did you call me? Hey, that is Tom Cruise! Though it's gained a reputation for causing controversy, it has been on air for 23 years now with no sign of stopping. You may ask how a show so controversial could possibly stay on the air for as long as it has. I believe this is because of their unwillingness to ever pick sides. South Park is often ruthless when it comes to their parodies of events and ideas, but the key to getting away with it is being equally ruthless to everyone. South Park chooses no sides when it comes to making fun of things, often making fun of both sides of an issue. They've made fun of both atheists and Christians, Republicans and Democrats, gay people and homophobes, rich and poor people, the list goes on and on. South Park doesn't care who it is or what it is. If they think something is silly, they will make fun of it. The writers live by a motto. I like to call it the one true law of South Park. Either it's all okay or none of it is. That unrelenting idea that nothing is off limits is a definite strong point in the show since it prevents the show from ever feeling preachy or like they're trying to push an agenda. Because they attack everyone and anyone, the show has mass appeal to people from all walks of life, assuming, of course, they're able to take the inevitable joke at their expense. This means the show has developed a massive cult following with an infinite amount of online fan pages and discussion boards. Hey, maybe we better do a towel call. That's a towel call? The occasional controversy is also important to the show's relevance, always drawing more attention to the show. Though often offensive in their methods of poking fun at groups and people, I think fans of South Park would agree that the core message behind each episode is rarely an offensive one. Most often, the point trying to be made is very inoffensive, the general idea behind most episodes being believe in whatever you want as long as you aren't extreme about it. So if that's the case, why is South Park so controversial? To answer this, we'll look once again at the episode Red Hot Catholic Love. The point trying to be made in that episode is that by looking too literally into the Bible and following every single word it says without question, you end up with expectations and ideas that are absurd in today's world. However, by disregarding any sort of mythology, a person's idea of morality can become just as absurd, causing them to quote, start spewing a bunch of crap out of their mouths. What was that last bit? Though the message is not a controversial one by any means, many Catholics were outraged by the show's depiction of all priests as child molesters. Hearing this, it becomes evident to fans that the people outraged by South Park's offensive material do not watch the episodes. Rather, they might see a small clip of it or hear about the controversy from the media. Without watching the episode, you miss huge amounts of nuance and context that is essential to the plot. Therefore, someone just hearing about this episode or seeing a clip out of context might think that the creators are trying to say they believe all priests are child molesters, all the while missing the true message behind the episode, one which they would likely agree with. This is why South Park has developed such a controversial reputation. The media takes certain plot points that, with context of the message, wouldn't be very offensive, and removes it from the context, leaving a clip or scene that is often offensive. Ironically, these controversies are actually a testament as to why the show was so great. 
These controversies demonstrate the show's ability to take a concept or idea that would be very controversial outside of the context of the show and turn it into a hilarious and clever take when given the proper context. Are you sure you boys just don't have any cash? We're not just sure. We're HIV positive. South Park truly is a show like no other. A show that is willing to go to places and tackle issues no one else would. A show that somehow manages to simultaneously be extremely offensive and inoffensive. A show that is a perfect example of how, when done correctly, humor can be the most effective way to tackle tough issues. A show that still manages to make their fans laugh with every episode, even 23 years later. Because of this combination of traits, as well as the evidence I've presented, South Park is, in my opinion, the greatest comedy ever created.